Hello, my name is Cindy Crawford, and this is The Cindy Crawford Show. Well, I got that wrong. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Uh, Okay, apparently my name is not Cindy Crawford, I've just been told. Is that correct? I'm not Cindy Crawford? Great. Hey, welcome to the program. I'm Ron Van Dam. It's the Cindy Crawford Show. What? It's not the Cindy Crawford? Okay. Uh, How you doing? Good to be with you today. We're going to have a good time. At least I am. You do what you want. Every once in a while, I tend to be forgetful, so they tell me to write things down. If you have a thought or something you you need to do, write it down. Get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or a writing implement and just write it down because you'll be surprised later on how important that is to do. So I started doing that. I started writing things down on paper so I wouldn't forget. Now I can't remember where I put that paper. I've been looking all over the place. I can't find it. I need to write down where I put the piece of paper where I wrote things down. Sometimes I feel inadequate. Sometimes I feel like I put my shoes on wrong. And I'm not talking about putting the left shoe on the right foot and the right shoe on the left foot. I'm talking about putting the shoes on backwards, where the toes are in the heel and the heel are in the... That's bad, isn't it? I've heard people say that uh, they had a bad day because they got up on the wrong side of the bed. What if your bed is like up against the wall on one side? That's bad. My only exercise during the day is getting up off the toilet. Thank you. (laughs) Hey, Ron, that was really funny. Hey, 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 that was really funny. Hey, hey, I was really witty. Uh, Welcome to the program. This is the Ron Van Dam Show. I'm Ron Van Dam, not Cindy Crawford. Boy, if I was Cindy Crawford, I wouldn't have to do this. What's with Cindy Crawford, man? She's become the, the, the poster child for older women looking like they're in their teens. I talked about this before on the show, but I didn't write it down. You probably don't remember. Uh, man, Cindy Crawford without the makeup probably doesn't look all that great. I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't live with her. At least I haven't for quite some time. I assume she's not that much of a knockout without the makeup on. And yet, I don't wear makeup, and I'm not so bad. So, all right. Uh, Did you hear what President Trump said? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't call him President Trump because I don't regard him as a president because he hasn't earned my respect. So, uh, did you hear what Trump said? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, he was addressing an audience of young Republicans. And uh, he said, he said, oh, my God. All right, 
see. I got to have the clown music in the background <laughs> because it emphasizes the situation. <laughs> here's, uh, yeah, uh, uh, here's what he said. Uh, he was speaking to a bunch of uh, young Republicans all throughout the audience. These are Republicans that are young uh, to grow up someday to be Republicans or older Republicans. I don't know how that works. So here's what John said. He said uh, he was he was downplaying the Mueller investigation thing, saying uh, how this Mueller was an, an Attorney General Barr, who Trump uh, handpicked like corn from a field, said, oh, there's no collusion, no obstruction. That's the end of it. Of course, it's not the case. If you've read the Mueller report, I'm sure you haven't. I have. I read volume two. Good reading. I love the pictures. And uh, Trump did some horrible things that the investigation found. Ten very strong and, and definitive examples of obstruction of justice. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't get it. Anyway, so Trump said, uh, uh, Trump says to these young Republicans, and this is, this is what floored me. He says, uh, oh, oh, this is floor, it floored me. He says, uh, Article 2 of the Constitution says that I can do anything I want as president. <gasps> Excuse me, Donald? You can't do anything you want as president. We have a Congress. Trump thinks Article 2 of the Constitution, which talks about executive privilege, executive powers of the elected president, he interpreted that to mean that he, that he can do anything he wants. <sighs> wow. <sighs> uh, that in itself, that statement in itself, should make any citizen of the United States crap their pants immediately. I mean, an immediate reaction in the pants. That is just so... Wow. If there's any reason Trump shouldn't become a president for a second term, that statement alone, which Trump truly believes, is the scariest statement I've ever heard. The second scariest is uh, Mr. Van Dam. Your car is going to have to go in the shop for three days and your insurance doesn't cover a rental. <gasps> no! What am I going to do? Anyway. Uh, oh, God. You know, many people get the idea that I don't particularly care for Trump. That's an understatement. This man is single-handedly just changing everything for no other reason than to satisfy his madness and his power. This is, this is like a movie... See, at least in a movie, when there's a when there's a, a movie about a, a guy who is who is crazy with power, thinks he can walk around and touch any woman's p u s s y. I don't, you know, kids might be listening. I don't want to say it. Uh, who pays a hush money to uh, to to porno star so that uh, people will not know about it, so he can be elected president. Stands up in front of a microphone podium rush if you have any from information on my opponent. I uh, hope you find it. Uh, all, all Mexicans are, are rapists and murderers crossing the border. That's what they all are. Um, uh, that uh, various countries uh, of, of immigrants are, are come from countries of shithole. They're shitholes, except for Norway. I I I I, I uh, uh, says that uh, uh, white supremacists are, are you know they're they're okay people. Uh, I, I mean I I I I I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and that's just like that's just four or five examples. There's another five hundred of them. I remember Trump uh, being interviewed on Air Force One. By a reporter, it's on tape. It's I mean, you can watch it anytime you want. And they say, Donald, do you know anything about this uh, Stormy Daniels thing? Uh, d did you instruct a, a payoff to, to Stormy Dan Daniels? 
uh, I don't know anything about it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Never happened. I don't know anything about it. And then we have a tape coming from Michael Cohen's office, specifically talking about the payoff to Stormy Daniels. <laughs> I was like, what? wow, this guy really lies. I mean, he really, really lies. Eight of the people that actually, actually, yeah, it, was, it is eight. It's, I think seven, seven or eight of, uh, of his closest advisors, both on national security and came, campaign advisors and political advisors, have been jailed and or indicted. Come on, man. Wow. This is an interesting time that we live in. I'm telling you that right now. And that's my little Trump report for today. Okay, Ron Van Dam may not be the prettiest face in radio, but come on, that voice... Am I right? You are listening to Ron Van Dam, the sexiest voice in podcasting on New England Broadcasting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, it's summertime. I like to go to concerts every once in a while. Uh, I I like to hear performers uh, perform live. it's like putting a, a coin in the slot and watching people dance for you. I think it's fun. There's one problem with going to a concert. Other people go too, and that's my problem. I don't have a great love or affinity to human beings. Animals, yes. Human beings, no, because human beings are calculatingly idiots. Animals, they don't know what they're doing, you know, they, maybe they're wild or they, they don't understand English or something, or maybe they're quite animalistic in their tendencies, but they don't know any better. This is what they do. They're being natural. Human beings have the ability to be kind and nurturing and emotional and empathetic. They have that ability. It can be done, but most of them choose not to do it. And again, I might refer to Trump here. But human beings have the ability to be compassionate, to make this whole earth such a wonderful place to be in, where everybody could get along and, and, and smile. And if there's differences of opinion, they say, ah, you know, we're do-, but I respect, I respect you. I respect. It's okay. Just please don't infringe your stuff upon my stuff and we'll be good. I mean, we have the ability to do that kind of thing. And even if we get upset with each other, we have the ability to, to, to work it out because we're intelligent people. We're intelligent. The, the overriding emotion in a human being should be peacefulness. We have a secretary of war. We have a war department We don't have a peace department. We don't have a secretary of peace. The absence of war should not be peace. The absence of peace would be war. Peace is the overriding comfort and experience in our existence. And yet we don't act like that. Trump, for example, I'm sorry to keep going back to him, but he is the Antichrist. I mean, I really think that's the title. I think someday that will be shown to be a fact. Trump purposely divides us, pits one against the other, takes religious and, 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 and ethnic groups and, and, and says the worst things about them. says that all Democrats are, are, are unpatriotic, that don't love, they don't love this country because they're trying to make it better. 
Donald, your campaign slogan in 2016 was Make America Great Again. Talk about complaining about things not being right. That's what every politician does. And yet you take some Democrats who have an idea that, that, that defy yours or say something negative about your ideas, Don, and, and you say they're, they're not patriots, they don't love this country, they're out to destroy it, they should go back to where they came from. Donald, you're fucked up. You don't get it. You just don't get it, man. I'm sorry to keep going back to him, but I mean, this is a man who's trying to divide and conquer. See, that's, that's, what, that's what the Russians are trying to do. Make the, the Western alliance so weak and so broken that they can just walk into the house and take over. And Donald has fallen right into that trap. Fallen in head first. That's why the Russians wanted Trump to be president, because they knew he was a patsy and a half, and he is. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He works from his gut. Have you seen his gut? You don't want to work from there. Boris Johnson, by the way, is, uh, is the new prime minister of Great Britain. Uh, yeah, Theresa May, who is the prior, uh, uh, she's today gone, Baba. Boris Johnson is in there. Take a look. Go to your Google machine and Google the picture or a picture of Boris Johnson, the new uh, British prime minister. And then look at Donald Trump. They look the same. They have the same hair, the same body. They wear the same clothes. We are into some type of a secret mission cloning operation. I kid you not. Of course, I am kidding. But it is uncanny. (laughs) The two of them look like brothers who need... An intervention, both of them need to be intervened. I said this a long time ago. The the United States was thinking about getting volunteers to go to Mars and they'd put them in a in a uh, you know in a thing, in a rocket ship, whatever you call that fucking thing. And uh send them to Mars and when they got to Mars they'd stay on Mars the rest of their life and colonize. Colonize is, is not by the way a word. It's colonize. Not colonize, colonize, colonize. They they would start a new world on Mars. They would colonize it. (laughs) They have a colonoscopy. They would go to Mars and get colonoscopies. And I and I seriously suggested that uh, Trump should be one of those volunteers. Just go to Mars, stay there the rest of your life, and shut the hell up, and uh, we will prosper, and we shall prosper here. But again, the big news, Trump, Second Amendment, Trump thinks that that means that uh, as chief executive, he can do whatever he wants. (laughs) Don't even, Don, don't even say that. That is just... You say a lot of stupid things, that might be the pinnacle of it. That might just be enough. Well, it's not enough to shake Republicans. You literally, you could shoot, Don, you said this yourself, you could shoot people, you could murder people on Park Avenue uh, in Manhattan and New York City, and your supporters would still stay with you, and most of the Republicans as well. So, um, ouch, So, so ouch. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow morning I woke up, Donald Trump has just shot five people in the middle of Manhattan. And by the next news day, we'd be talking about uh, too many sugar calories and soda. I mean, I, I just... I, uh, <clears throat> Let me ask you a question, everybody listening to the show. If you were found to have done something terrifically illegal like obstruct, uh, obstruct justice in a federal investigation. Do you think that uh, 
she would just like they'd go oh okay sorry uh bye we can't we can't indict you we we can't arrest you because you are who you are <laughs> you, your ass would be slapped in jail so fast you wouldn't even know what happened to you but if you're the president they cannot indict you for anything <sighs> Seriously, who came up with that one? Who came up with that one? A sitting president cannot be indicted. If a citizen of the United States who pays taxes was accused of the same thing, could they be indicted? Of course, in a in a in a second. But if you're the president, you're immune. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Nobody is above the law. Wrong, Ron. The president is above the law. The president can break the law. Do all kinds of stuff. And the only repercussion is some people may not vote for him in the next election. Can't be touched. That is so wrong, I can't believe it. Especially when that guy says, I'm referring to Trump, when that very guy says, as president, I can do anything I want. <gasps> wow. Okay, let's move on. I do have a guest today, and we're going to have some conversation with that guest. Did you ever hear of the Airbnb thing? Yeah, people all across the world, they open up their homes to travelers and you pay the uh, homeowner a certain amount of money. You can stay there for uh, an agreed upon period of time in, in one of their rooms. Um, personally, I think that idea sucks. I would never stay in somebody's house that I don't know, especially if they have knives in the kitchen and vice versa. Not only do I know, not know where I'm staying and the personalities of the people that I'm staying in their house, I would not want to be a homeowner and have some strangers live in my house for an extended period of time because they're paying me for it. How the hell am I going to do background checks on, on, on anybody that, that, that wants to stay in my house? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't understand this Airbnb thing at all. Are you kidding me? I mean, if you're that desperate to make money that you have to have strangers stay in, in your spare bedroom, then you you got then you got to get a real job, man. That's like, what are you kidding me? Although I am surprised that in the news we never hear on a daily basis. A woman murdered in her own home. Uh, Airbnb tenant uh, kills her uh, because he's crazy. I, I, I don't know if it happens. I know the Airbnb people are not going to be thrilled with me saying that. But it's, I mean, it's the same kind. It's actually worse than getting into an Uber. Now, I'm not getting into somebody else's car, sitting in the back seat, then the locks go down, and this Uber driver can take me anywhere they want. Um, no, thank you. And I'm not sitting in a stranger's car where they probably just had some type of wild sex in the back seat the night before. I'm not into that, and I'm not into staying into strangers uh, into strangers' homes or having strangers stay in my home or having strangers get in my car or getting into the car of a stranger. I think there are better ways to do this. <laughs> They're called taxis, and they're also called hotels. I'm sorry, but I thought we took care of that problem already. All right. Uh, my guest does join me, and it is about an Airbnb. Actually, it's something really nice that the Airbnb people are doing, so excuse the fact that I even said what I just said, but at the same time, it is a uh, concern of mine, let's say. <laughs> But I'll do what I want because I'm president of the United States, right? 
Have you ever wondered how Ron Van Dam manages to sound so damn sexy podcast after podcast after podcast? It's simple. No pants. Ever. Pants are for suckers. You are listening to The Ron Van Dam Show. Pants-free podcasting at its finest. Kelly Bentz joins us. She's the head global disaster relief and recovery with Airbnb. You would think it would be a government agency that you're with, but you're not. Uh, Airbnb uh, is just, man, it's all over the place. All the, You know, like five years ago, I didn't know what people were talking about when they said that. I thought it was an airline. I really did. Uh, but now it's just, it's all over the world. My God, how did that happen? Yes, Airbnb has grown incredibly. We now have 6 million listings in 191 countries. So the growth, uh, it's hard to find someone that doesn't know what Airbnb is. Yeah, really. And, and it is all over the place. And, uh, and it, it does actually uh, come into light when people need something other than just a place to stay on vacation, which was, I guess, the original thought. Now we're getting into a whole new realm, and that gets into what you do. Uh, the head of uh, Global Disaster Relief and Recovery. How does Airbnb fit into that? So Airbnb fits into disaster response and relief because back in 2012, um, a host asked during Hurricane Sandy how they could open their home for free to those that were evacuated. Mm -hmm. Since that time, we've developed a program where we are able to activate our host community. They voluntarily opt into a program called Open Homes. Uh Through that process, we're able to ask them to waive their fees, we waive our fees, and it's absolutely free to those that are evacuated or displaced wow. or for relief workers that are deployed to help a community recover. So if you think about it in those moments, it's often temporary accommodations that are needed. So a few nights or a few weeks is what our hosts have to offer. And our host, is, host community is such a generous community. So we really want to create this opportunity and expand as much as possible, knowing that um, many people are, be, are able to be helped through this program. It's interesting to me because this has always been going on through history where people open their homes to people who need disaster relief. Uh, they've always done that. They'll, you know, you can sleep in the living room on the couch or something like that. But yeah. then Airbnb came along and it, actually people were thinking about uh, making their place available as accommodation. So they're set up for that already. And that's, that's, right. the, that's the interesting part is that they're set up to do something like this. That's right. I mean, I remember back in Katrina, um, many people wanted to open their home and they were listing their space on Craigslist and others. This really allows hosts that are already hosting and others who want to be hosts just for open homes to list on a trusted platform um, where we're able to provide the same capabilities and the same level of customer support to both our hosts and guests in their greatest time of need. That's right. And you're still, of course, you're basically as an Airbnb host, you're giving up profits in order to do this, but that's what we do as, as a people. Uh, I'm sorry, Ron, I, I didn't hear the last probably 20 seconds. Oh, what you okay, said. all right. It was probably the least 20 seconds of my life, to be honest with you. Okay. No, okay. no, what I said was that uh, the hosts, the Airbnb hosts are giving up their their profits and their income in order to take people in, which is what we do as a people anyway or what we should be doing. That's right. It, it, this is a program that allows hosts to voluntarily open their home, waive their fees, and yeah. we waive our fees. So, Wonderful. yes, they are forgoing that and um, being extremely generous in these okay. times of need. Let me ask you an Airbnb question that I've always wanted to ask an Airbnb person that has little to do necessarily with this particular situation. Uh, if you have someone in your home, what are the contractual arrangements like if they're being idiots or destructive or loud? Can you just throw them out, or is it like they're renting the space? Uh, it's a great question. Not when I, um, and, you know, obviously I'm here yeah. to talk about disaster. I know, um, but I know. We, have our customer, we do have our customer support team that is able to work with okay. um, the hosts and local authorities to ensure that we make it right yeah. um, in that situation. Very good. That's a good answer. You did very well with that answer. I've always Thank been curious. Yeah, I've been curious about that. But this is something else. This is opening your home to someone that actually needs help on a temporary basis, we should say, on a temporary basis. This That's is right. Yes, yeah, right. This is not for uh, for 10 years. 
<laughs> yeah, typically a few nights to a few weeks. That's, so what people yeah. really need, you know, especially when people are evacuated, it's yeah. such a um, a great use case, I would say, just yeah. because people often are just sort of waiting to get back to their home, but they just need a few nights, and it's often very costly um, for people to do that evacuation, and many are not prepared for that financial burden. Okay. All right, let's say that uh, some type of natural disaster occurs, and it doesn't have to be statewide. It can just be like a gas explosion on your street or something. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole thing. Uh, but you're displaced temporarily or a fire or something like that. Um, how, did the, how did the two hook up? Uh, how, how does one know when they're in need of a place, how, do, how does one know where to go? And how does a host person let uh, a victim, let's say, know that they are available for this type of program? It's a great question. Right now, Open Homes is available mostly for major catastrophic events, although we're working to grow the program for mm -hmm. those individual home fires. Right, right now, um, to become a part of the program, either to list your space or to be able to find a space if you're in need, mm -hmm. go to airbnb.com forward slash disaster response and either click list your space or find a space depending on the need. And you'll be able to see where we're currently activated. Okay. And again, this is all over the world uh, in many countries. How many countries is this available? Uh, so Airbnb is in 191 countries. Wow. Um, open Homes program is global. So theoretically, depending on where there's a catastrophic, catastrophic event, we are able to activate in any community where we, are, um, where we have hosts. Wow. So we've currently done, we've done hundreds uh, around the world. Um, and accommodated close to 30, our hosts have accommodated close to 30,000 uh, people in their time of need. Good. Wow. It's nice to talk to somebody in a feel good, uh, give it up for people in need uh, kind of thing. That's a nice thing. We need more of that in our lives. Uh, thanks for thanks. doing that and coordinating that. Okay. One more time, that website where we can get all this information. So the website is airbnb.com forward slash disaster response. And you can click find a space or list your space. Perfect. Kelly, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much, Ron. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There you have it, my friends. You've been really tolerant and stoical. Look those words up. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll be with you again tomorrow. Until then, I wish you peace. <laughs>